Well, welcome to Friends and Neighbors. We hope you're having a wonderful day, just like we are here at Friends and Neighbors. Yes. I'm Sherry Tatum, your co-host, along with Miss Regina Howard. Yes, ma'am. The uh, interviewer extraordinaire. No. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm sitting b beside the professional. <laughs> oh, no, yes, you I are. You. And, and when we have our dear friend Sandra Onan yes. in her beautiful yeah. orange yes. today, <laughs> who's our other wonderful co host. Yes, she is. And we're going to be interviewing uh, Tanika Fitzgerald. And, and um, she wrote a book called Miscarried Joy. And it um, says, Moving Beyond Incredible Pain and Extraordinary Faith. And it it's, uh, can be a hard subject, uh, a subject of pain. Yes. Uh, uh, for a lot of women that's gone through miscarriage, mm -hmm. but we're going to try and make it not as down, but a little bit up because we know God has a plan. Yes, he yes. does. Right, Miss Tanika? Yes, Now, does. tell me a little bit about Miscarried Joy and why you wrote it. Sure. Well, I'll tell you a little bit of my story. About seven months into our marriage, we found out that we were expecting. We had just come off of a vacation in Florida, and I am usually a ball of energy, and I was sleeping all day. <laughs> I know the feeling. And my husband said, I think you're pregnant. And I said, oh, no. no. <laughs> I said, you can go get a pregnancy test. I'll prove you wrong. And so he went and got a pregnancy test. And he came back. And he was standing in the bathroom. And he looked at me. And he said, honey, you're pregnant. Wow. And then he fainted. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I guess he was, he wanted it really bad, but he, right. it, reality hit him. Yeah. And, you know, at that moment, we took our prayer life to a level that we had not before. Mm -hmm. And about three weeks later, on Father's Day, actually, I began to bleed. Mm -hmm. And we were out at dinner. We were celebrating him becoming a dad. And I called the doctor, and she said, you're beginning to miscarry, and there's nothing I can do about it. Not the best bedside manner, right? Oh, no. <laughs> um, and so we went home and we began to pray. And the next day I went to the doctor and we found out that we had lost our baby. Mm -hmm. And after that we had uh, the procedure to just clear everything out. And a couple days after that I got a call from the doctor and she said, your numbers are showing that you're still pregnant. You need to hurry up and get in here. Mm -hmm. And so my husband and I rushed from our jobs to the doctor's office, and we went from one test to the other. And after a couple of hours, they found out that there was another baby right outside of my ovary. So we were carrying twins. Wow. And they had to give me medication to miscarry that baby naturally. Mm -hmm. So within a period of two weeks, we had lost two babies. Bless your and you know, at first I said, oh, I don't know why this is happening. And then there was a moment where I blamed God and I was angry at God. And I just began to pray. Mm -hmm. And there was a scripture that I had never read before, Exodus 23, 26. And it says that there shall not be any miscarriages or barrenness in the land. Mm -hmm. Wow. And I said, okay, God, if you're saying that, then this can't come from you. Mm -hmm. And I was a reminded of Job. And when Satan went to God and he said, mm -hmm. Job has had a beautiful life, but I bet if you take everything mm -hmm. that he loves, yes. yeah. he will curse you and yeah. die. Mm -hmm. And I said, this is Satan getting God's permission Oof. to mess with my faith and to see if I will give up on God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And four months later, we found out that we were pregnant again and we went to the doctor. The baby had made it to the uterus. Everything seemed to be going well. And we went in for another routine appointment to hear the heartbeat and found out that they couldn't see the baby, wasn't measuring correctly, so they asked us to wait. And so my husband said, we're just going to pray. And we began to pray. And we came back the next week, and there was our baby. Mm. We could see the baby on the screen. And the doctor said, well, the gestational sac is irregular, and we just want to prepare you that this might not be a viable pregnancy. And we said, well, we hear you, but we're praying. That's right. And yes. so we continued to pray, and we went home, and we told our parents, and they began to join us in prayer. And we went back about a week and a half later, and we found out that we had lost our third baby. And at that moment, oh. I know you should go directly to the Bible, but I didn't. I went to Google, and I looked for a book that was written by a woman 
that was going through this same journey, not mm -hmm. by a woman that had already had her children mm -hmm. and had miscarried, but someone who was in the midst of this that could relate to what I was feeling and I could not find one. And in my prayer time, God said, you couldn't find one because I've commissioned you to write it. Wow. And that's where wow. the book Miss Carrie Joy came from. Mm. Wow, Nick, mm. that is such a testimony. Thank well, how you. were you feeling at that time after losing three children? Frustrated, fearful, mm. angry. Um, you know, God, why me? Mm. Yes. How could you allow this to happen? And God said, well, why not you? Mm -hmm. yeah. I've allowed this to happen to you because you're strong enough to live through it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it just took me to a different level of faith. And I began to read about the barren women in the mm -hmm. Bible. And so that's what Miss Carrie Joy wow. is about. It takes you through the lives and the journey of the barren women of the Bible. And it extracts lessons of faith from their lives that we should be applying to our own. Mm -hmm. You know, and I start talking about Sarah and Abraham. Right. Yeah. God had given them a promise that they were going to become the father and mother of many nations. Mm -hmm but yet they had no children. Mm -hmm. Yes. And they waited and waited, and it was about 25 years between the time, time gave them the promise mm -hmm. and the time their promised son was born. But in the midst of that, Sarah became impatient. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, she and did. And she devised she her own plan Little B. Plan. Mm -hmm. And she brought Hagar into the picture, and Hagar gave birth to Ishmael, mm -hmm. which I call a seed of the flesh mm -hmm. in the book. And don't we do that sometimes? Right. Yes. There are times when we're waiting on God, and God is not moving fast enough. Mm -hmm. right. And so we're praying for something, and we give it to Him, and then we take it back. Right. right. And that's what Sarah did, and it mm -hmm. caused all types of issues yes, it in did. their Still family to this life. Day. <laughs> Exactly. Mm -hmm. yes. And yes. so that's what we can learn from the life of Sarah is that we have to be patient right. and we have we to trust, trust God and take matters timing. in our own hands. Absolutely. Because the Absolutely. consequences are irreversible sometimes. Right. Yes. Yes. Well, did you feel at that time that, uh, or did it cross your mind, well, I will never have a, a child, I'll never yes. go to full term oh. with a child? Yes. Or did you maybe give up some hope there? Um, I did not give up, okay. but it did cross my mind. And, and what I had to learn is that the Holy Spirit ministers to us mm -hmm. and the enemy does too. Mm -hmm. And so when those oh, thoughts oh, came into so my mind, I had yeah. to remember this is not a thought from the Holy Spirit. Right. This is the enemy ministering to me. He wants me to say, I'm going to give up. I'm never going to have a child, mm -hmm. but I could never give him that satisfaction. And so when I become discouraged, I go to the throne of God and Amen. say, God, I'm discouraged mm -hmm. yes. and this is hard and I want to give up, but I know you to be a healer. I know you to be a comforter. Yes. I know about all the things that you have mm -hmm. done for other people in biblical times and even today. Yeah, yes. Yes. And so that helps to remind me that God is faithful. Yes, he and is. I know that there, if this is a desire in me that's so strong to become a mom, mm -hmm. it's because he's put it there. there mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. And so I trust that mm -hmm. and I just keep going. And I have people around me and in my life that join with us in prayer and that really, really speak to me and minister to me okay. when I feel like I want to give up. Okay, <laughs> we've got where you were, but how about your husband? Well, where was he during this, this time? Um, the first time we miscarried, when we lost the two babies, I believe that my husband was being so strong for me that he probably did his mourning in private. Mm -hmm. um, he talks to my dad a lot, and my dad have a very close relationship. And my parents went through something very similar. So them being able to help us through this has been an enormous blessing. Yes. And when we had the second miscarriage was the loss of our, when we had the third, when we lost our third baby, I had the DNC that Friday and that Saturday, my husband lost his brother. Mm. And mm. so not only was he grieving our baby, he was grieving our brother. Mm. And so there were times afterwards when I would just see him and he would cry yes. or, you know, he would just be quiet. And I knew that there were times where I needed to comfort him. Yes. There were times where I knew that I needed to pray for him. And there were times where I knew I just needed to let him be. Yes. But he's doing really, really well. And I say that he's been a rock for me. Yes. When I get discouraged, he will say, you know what? Let's stop, let's pray. Yes. Um, let's confess to God what we're believing for. And I talk about 
Isaac and Rebecca yes. in the book. And what's really, what really stood out for me is that there is not a scripture that says that Rebecca prayed for God oh. to bless her with the baby. I it never said that read Isaac that. prayed. Yeah. It said that Isaac pleaded on behalf of his wife mm -hmm. for her to have a child. Wow. And I believe that that is what our husbands need to remember. It is their responsibility wow. to cover us in prayer. Right. Yes. And so my husband has been an amazing covering for yes. me in prayer. He takes my deepest desires to God in Amen. his prayer time. And that's, that, that's, oh. Wow, that's when, powerful. When that, that happens, yes, the power of God shows up so strong. Yes. And even in prayer, a man that findeth a, a man that findeth the wife findeth a good thing yes. and obtaineth favor, favor from the Lord. Oh, so when yeah. he goes to God on behalf of oh, her, that favor comes and that favor shows up. Yes. And that's Break. just that's that's mm -hmm. just a blessing and a testament when you said your parents went through that. Yes. But they didn't go through it for them. Yeah. They went mm. through it because down the road they were gonna have to be there to strengthen and encourage you. Yeah. We don't understand why we go through what we go through. And yes. I, I can attest to it, I've been there. So we don't understand why, right. but God has a perfect plan. Mm. We don't see it right then That's right. because we, we don't think Bible at the moment. We right. don't. Just like you and said. And you can easily go, and I love what you said, yes. we don't think Bible at the moment, but you can easily go one direction or the other. Yeah. So what yes. you just said about being so powerful, saying, I know I'm going to go back to what God is ministering to me yes. versus the Be attacks focused. of the enemy because with every blessing in life comes a battle, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And, you, and God girds you in to say, I'm going to uh, fight this battle. That's right. Well, Amen. how do you implement strategies, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Ms. Tanika, to fight the enemy boldly? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. well, the scripture says come boldly before the throne yes. of thrice, grace and make your petitions known. Mm -hmm. But it, it's like when you're just out, you're, you've given out yes. and you're empty. Yes. How do you be bold? Well, the Bible says to speak those things that are not as though they were. Mm -hmm. Amen, sister. Mm -hmm. That's and right. And so we have named our children. We are waiting for them. Mm -hmm. They oh. have shoes. They have oh. clothes. I love it. Expecting. And we are, that's exactly yeah. what it is. We mm -hmm. are expecting God mm -hmm. to do this. Mm -hmm. Amen. And we have a confession that I've included in the back of the book and my husband and I confess that together mm -hmm. every what is the day. What confession? Could we know? It's very, well, it's not very long, but it's part of it. Yes. And so we are confessing, you know, we say, God, we thank you mm -hmm. that you have blessed us with the children that we have been praying for. Mm. Yes. God, we thank you that you have equipped us to, with everything that we need to be the parents to raise our children according to godly standards. Mm. We're even believing that God will give us a painful labor and delivery. Yes. And that is part of our confession because pain came, you know, when, when Jesus came, he came to take the pain away. Mm -hmm. yes. So I believe that pain is a choice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so if I go into my labor and delivery saying, this is not going to be painful, I'm not going to labor in vain. And that is the level of my faith. I believe that God will do it. He, he will. will honor it. He will. And yes. so in order for us to stay encouraged, we are just, we live in expectancy mm -hmm. and we don't focus on what our current situation is. Mm -hmm. We focus on what the future outcome will be. will be. And then we have a lot of friends who are having babies and so we celebrate them. Yes. Oh, that's right? great. Because the yeah, Bible says rejoice when yes, others rejoice. rejoice. And so we mm -hmm. celebrate them and it is a reminder of what God is able to do. That's what I, I was reading in your book and it says embrace God's delay. Yes. And birth contentment in your season of waiting. Mm -hmm. Is that through scripture too? Yes. A lot yes. of scripture? Yeah, Did there's a lot of scripture packed in the book because I believe that if you want to hear the voice of God, you have to read the word of Ooh, God. That's Amen. Right. You can't hear that's his right. voice. You, you can't. won't recognize mm -hmm. it if you don't know what he's talking exactly. about. The discernment isn't there. That's and right. Yeah. I need yeah. to be obedient to God. Yes. I need to know what he what needs he to be what he needs me to be obedient to. Yes. And so that's found in the word. And so I spend a lot of time in the word of God. Yes, and I spend a lot of time confessing God's promises mm. over myself. You know, I, I'm reminded of the woman with the issue of blood. Mm -hmm. Amen. She was bleeding for 12 years and mm -hmm. she said, if I can just touch the hem of his just garment, touch it. Mm, I will be made it. whole. Yes. But it wasn't her touching the hem of, her, mm -hmm. of his garment that made her whole. It was her faith. faith. Yes. And so I always 
remember that I need to operate in my faith. Wow. Yes. And Powerful. even in the moments where I'm discouraged, I say, okay, I can dwell here for just a second. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Just right? a quick second. Just a quick second. Yeah. A quick second. And then I have to get back on my rock of faith. Yes. You know, and I, the story of Hannah mm -hmm. really, really touches me. Oh, mm -hmm. I love that story. And a story. lot of people read it and they say, oh, Hannah prayed. Mm -hmm. But if you think about the situation that Hannah was in, she was living with a woman who wanted what she had. Yes. Mm -hmm. She had to look at those babies every day. Be yeah, reminded. Every day. And yes. I mean, Panina pushed her, provoked mm -hmm. her every day. Mm -hmm. yes. And one day Hannah had enough and she got up alone mm -hmm. and went to Shiloh. And a lot of times when we're in the midst of these situations, we want to bring people with us. Mm -hmm. And we want to say, will you pray for me? Will you pray yes. with me? Yes. But sometimes God just wants us you, to get into yes, his Jesus. presence by ourselves. Get in that prayer closet. Uh, yes, yes, yes. And what I love about the story of <laughs> Hannah, it says that once she got up from the altar at Shiloh, there was nothing about her situation that was different. Mm -hmm. She was not pregnant. Mm -mm. She still had to go home and be taunted every day. Yes. But she rested. Mm -hmm. Yes, she rested. And it says that she rested. Oh, she rested. Yes. And so oh, I, I love it. rest mm -hmm. in the promises of God. Amen. Amen. And That's I right. know that what my husband and I are believing for mm -hmm. will coming. manifest. It and, is mm -hmm. coming. And so We're, we are resting in yes. his timing. Yes. He's a rewarder yeah, of, them of them that diligently, diligently yes. seek, seek him. him. Mm -hmm. So right. you keep seeking his promises yes. in the word and, and he's going to reward yes. you. Well, where two or three agree is touching anything, yes. he said he'd do it. He so do we're it. all in agreement with your word and on the word of God. Uh, because I, I believe that. I mm -hmm. believe in agreeing with a person's yes. faith. And right. you're a woman of faith. And yes. what a wonderful mother you, you are going yes. to you. be yes. when those babies come in this world. Amen. Now tell me, tell this audience where they can get your book, Tanika. They can purchase the book right on my website if you want a signed copy, www.misscarryjoy.com. It's also available on Amazon and Barnes & Noble websites. You're precious. Yes. Thank, Thank you for being you. with us, old Thank friends and neighbors. Ooh, loved you. it. Mm. Hope it helped you as much as it did me. Amen. Yep. Just a precious story. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Tanika. Thank, Thank you. God. Thank, Thank you for having me. Faith. Welcome back. We're so glad that you're here and we've been blessed yes. so far, but you're about to be blessed again. We're going to send you over to Sandra, who's going to speak with our musical guest and she's going to be a blessing to you. I guarantee. Amen. Well, hello there. I'm standing here with uh, Jacqueline Carr. Welcome to Friends and Neighbors Music Set. Thank you. We're so excited <laughs> to have you with us. Thank and you for having me. Now, I wanted to ask you a little bit about your latest uh, project. Mm -hmm. It's called The Life Project. Yes, Is that right? Yes. Tell me a little bit about that. <laughs> well, when you hear The Life Project, you'll see that most majority of the songs on the album, it touches so many different areas mm -hmm. in um, the people of God's life. Mm -hmm. um, you get your bigger talking about how big God is over any situation we could ever deal with. Right. You know, because so many times the enemy would try to supersize our problems right. to where it seems like we cannot overcome it. But I tell people, what is too big for us, it is just right for God. That's right. Yes, and then you get other songs, You Spoke Over Me, We Will Stand, just releasing the message of unity and, mm -hmm. you know, us loving, uh, sharing love amongst each other and things like that. So now, do you write your songs? I do. Oh, All of the awesome. writing is in in-house. It's Yay. either myself that wrote it, my dad, or we wrote it together. That's moms, great. Or, yeah. That's wonderful. Well, I'm so excited to hear you. Now, are you based out of Atlanta now? I am or? now. Okay. Yes. That's <laughs> wonderful. You've been here for about two and a half years now. That's great. Yes. Well, we are so excited. Now, what, which song are you in particularly going to sing? Right now is going to be your bigger. You are bigger. And tell me just a little bit about it before we go. Again, you. it is um, my first single from the album, okay. The Life Project. Um, and actually, this song, God has allowed me to be nominated for a Grammy this congratulations. year. Congratulations. I was about <laughs> to go there with you. So Thank congratulations you. for you that. Thank you so much. And we are just so thrilled. So it's called You Are Bigger. You're Bigger. You yes. are Bigger. Are awesome. Well, we are excited to hear you and can't wait um, to worship along with you. Now, Thank how you. can we contact you if we, um, how can the viewers contact you? Yes, all of my social media is under my name at Jekaylin Carr, J-E-K-A-L-Y-N-C-A-R-R. -R. My website is myjekaylincarr.net. Awesome. Well, we are so excited to listen to Ms. Jekaylin Carr sing, You Are Bigger. Is that right? That's right. All right. Thank you. <laughs>
Jesus, I don't care what the doctors say, he's still bigger than diabetes. The stripes on your back makes you bigger. The stripes on your back, they make you bigger. They make you bigger. Your blood makes you bigger. Your love makes you bigger. You overcame death, and that makes you bigger. That makes you bigger. Right there where you are, lift your hands and your voice and sing this to the Lord. You're bigger, yes, you are, Lord. You're bigger. You're bigger, Jesus, yeah. telling you. Ja'Kalen Carr. Oh, wow. What a blessing. Awesome, oh, awesome gosh. ministry. Man, you could feel the Lord. Yes, the she, presence. She brought the Lord yes, she, into she, the house. She <laughs> ushered him right in. He's uh, bigger. Yes. He's bigger than anything we're going through. Amen, brother. Any situation, mm. any circumstance. Absolutely. He's bigger, and, and we've seen that, yes. how he strengthened and even kept Tanika. Yes. He's bigger Mm -hmm. than what we face and so we have to recognize that yes. and honor God yes and for, keep the faith yes and speak yes. the word yes because you, that is the, you can speak life yes or you can speak death yes. you can speak blessing or, or you cursing. can speak cursing, cursing. Yes. and I, I if you know the word you better be speaking life. the word because <laughs> that is life to any situation yes, that is. you're in he is savior of all and in all things Yes, he is. He is the Lord. Because power and death are in, in the, the in the in the, the life and death, the power of your tongue. Um, yes. So what you say yes. is what you'll get. What you Amen. speak is what you will experience. And so friends and neighbors today wants you to experience yes. life, joy, joy, love, and peace. peace. And that's the what Holy we want. Ghost. Exactly. <laughs> and that's the best that you can yes. have. Amen. We love you here, love friends you. and neighbors. Yes. Thank you so much for, for joining us.